All right. So we do have uh, lots of points and topics to cover. So I think we can start. I the attendees will keep joining. The session is recorded, so you should be able to uh, look at the recording later. All right, so hi everyone. My name is Punya Mall. I'm the product manager for Content Manager. And I thank you all for joining the uh, taking time to join the session today. So in this session, we will take a look at the portfolio direction and vision, uh, the recent and upcoming releases on our roadmap, and uh, run with a few demos. And then we'll take a quick look at the radar and the resources after that. So before I proceed, uh, I just wanted to let you know that the QA window is open to everybody. And please feel free to post your questions and I'll try to answer them. If I'm not able to answer each one of them, I'll be reaching out to you uh, since I'll have the email ID and uh, I'll reach out to you with the answers. All right, so let's continue our presentation. Now, since all of us are here and using Content Manager, uh, I do want to take this opportunity to uh, recap some of the strategy that we follow and why we do it. Um, so as all of you know that in our ever evolving business landscape, the importance of balancing records management between compliance and collaboration cannot be overstated. This is a balance that we will continue to prioritize from a strategy perspective. Why do we want to do this? Because effective records management is grounded in compliance. It ensures that customer organizations like you operate within the bounds of regulatory requirements. It safeguards against legal liabilities, protects sensitive data, and basically upholds trust with your stakeholders. Compliance is non-negotiable and it's the very foundation upon which everybody relies for credibility and reputation. Equally important is collaboration that fuels innovation, productivity and growth. Now, By fostering collaboration within your records management strategy, you are able to empower your customers organizations to work seamlessly across departments, share knowledge and drive the transformative change. Therefore, we will continue to invest in building content manager that strikes a balance between compliance and collaboration. So next, let's take a quick look at the use cases that uh, most of our customers fall into either one category or you know sometimes multiple of them. So the first one is around data privacy. This is pretty self-explanatory. The privacy concerns nowadays are at an all-time high and uh, effective records management is very essential. Now content manager, uh, as you would know, plays well while implementing robust data privacy measures. This way organizations can ensure that sensitive information is handled with the utmost care protecting the rights and privacy of individuals while also maintaining compliance with uh, regulatory mandates such as GDPR or CCPA. Some of the functions, uh, some of the features in CM uh, such as security groups, modular access controls, section 17A, uh, these are some of the features that aids in such use cases and are deployed by our customers. The next use case uh, is around data security and compliance. Again, with the ever present threat of cyber attacks and data breaches, um, you must be prioritizing your data security uh, within your record management practices. And CM helps here by being able to implement stringent security protocols and compliance measures such as encryption, access controls, and audit trials. This way, organizations are able to safeguard against uh, unauthorized access, mitigate risks, and again, basically maintain the trust of your customers and stakeholders. 
moving on to the next one is around uh, data lifecycle management and collaboration. I think nearly all of our customers fall into this use case, use this uh, for their collaborative requirements, collaboration requirements. Now, effective records management just you know extends uh, beyond just mere storage. It encompasses the entire life cycle of data from creation to disposal. Now, by implementing good, robust life cycle management strategies, customers are able to optimize their storage resources, ensure data integrity and uh, facilitate collaboration across teams and departments. Uh, by enabling seamless access to this kind of uh, collaborative information, organizations drive their productivity, innovation, and basically they are able to take informed decision making. The last use case is uh, very specific to some of our customers. This is around data migration and archiving, um, as well as application retirement. Now, <clears throat> I think as all of us know that technologies evolve and business needs change. Organizations effectively need to manage the uh, migration of data between systems, as well as sometimes they archive and retire the legacy applications. Now, CM helps in uh, best, practice, best practices around records management. Uh, organizations are able to streamline these processes, minimize disruption, and uh, basically ensure that the integrity and the accessibility of archive data for future reference or compliance purposes is kept safely. Now, in general, CM is committed to compliance with industry standards. Uh, we do have certifications around DOD, uh, the Victorian Encryption Record Standards, and this way CM ensures that all of our customers remain at the forefront of regulatory compliance, uh, safeguard the integrity and authenticity of records. Uh, in accordance to the uh, recognized benchmarks. So although even if a uh, content manager has been in the field for good amount of time, our efforts have been towards making this as a modern solution. So we position content manager as a modern cross enterprise solution. And uh, there are these three pillars which uh, contributes to uh, the cross enterprise solution effectiveness. The first one is around user interface. We have a dedicated team. We work with this team to uh, ensure that the UX, the user interface or the user experience stays modern. And uh, one of our strategic goal is to evolve the web client in which we bring in many more features functionality that simplifies the use of these functionalities for and increases the productivity of the users. But you know what truly uh, sets CM apart, content manager apart, is the capability to seamlessly integrate with the Microsoft productivity suite. And uh, by this collaboration, CM is able to empower uh, organizations to manage the records directly with familiar workflows. Uh, this basically reduces training requirements, enhances efficiency and accuracy while minimizing disruptions to established processes. And <clears throat> let's not forget that we are also starting to collaborate with the Google ecosystem. In a few slides, I'll be talking about what we are delivering uh, with the Google ecosystem in 24.2 and in the roadmap, we will see what we plan to do further with the Google ecosystem. So this interoperability again would enable those organizations looking at the Google side of things to leverage the flexibility and scalability of their cloud storage while maintaining the centralized control over their record management processes. CM, as you would know, uh, is focusing a lot on the manage in place capabilities. Now, this allows our customers to retain and manage records within their existing storage infrastructure. Now, this not only minimizes disruption, but also enables comprehensive records management across disparate systems, different repositories. 
uh, ensuring a seamless and cohesive approach to the information governance. So this is an area which we are focusing heavily and we will continue to focus in the future also. And last but not the least, uh, CM does have an extensive API that enables customers to customize, extend, it, extend its capabilities uh, to suit their unique business requirements. Now, whether it is automating record capture or uh, streamlining archival processes or enhancing search capabilities, uh, Content Manager APIs basically enable all of this and is able to harness the full potential of, uh, of the product and tailor it to the specific needs of the organization. So let's talk about the directional themes. Uh, we do have four pillars here, and the focus of uh, the automation and machine learning is towards enabling certain features around auto classifications that work seamlessly with the idle enterprise. Uh, we also plan to enhance the search experience, uh, bring in newer capabilities around uh, natural language processing, being able to refine the search filters or you know being able to search across all the metadata fields uh, on the modernization perspective modern interface like i mentioned earlier we do have a uh, dedicated ux team and we are working with them to bring in uh, or modernize the ui web ui we do have certain features uh, in 24.2 which brings in your capabilities that is designed with the UX team, and it also uh, changes the user experience to one of the existing uh, capabilities. So we'll we'll have a look uh, in the feature demo. Similarly, for mobile app, those of you have who have used the mobile app would see a newer interface, and uh, this has been done to adhere to the modern standards, adhere to open text UX standards, and uh, we do have. Uh, extensive uh, changes to this mobile app. From an enterprise data management perspective, uh, we continue to work with one of our strengths managed in place. And like I said, we are bringing in support for Google ecosystem and uh, we plan to uh, work on the bulk import requirements. So around scheduling migration reports or data ports. So we do have plans to work on all of that. And again, from a collaboration perspective we continue to work with our strongest integration the m365 so you will continue to see incremental innovation in all of the releases uh, for the m365 and like i said beginning with uh, 24.2 we have taken a step towards integrating with the google drive uh, as a means to planning a bigger integration later All right, so the upcoming release is 24.2, which is set to release at the end of this month. We have three pillars. Uh, the modernization in which we have changes to the web UI, uh, which we shall see a demo. Then we have changes to, we have a feature update to the license uh, rollover. So this is for all of our CM select customers who had uh, challenges in uh, applying a future dated license. So even if they have purchased a future, uh, they would not be able to apply that. They would still have to go through all the warnings till the date of expiry and then manually change this on the date of expiry. So that's something which we have changed. We have updated in this release. From an integration perspective, uh, integration with MS Teams. So we, those of, you, those of you using MS Teams know that we have a strong integration with it. And uh, in this release, we have incremental innovation uh, and we bring in shared channels, support uh, all of the existing features functionality from Teams integration also now extends to shared channels. Uh, second one is around Google Drive. Like I said, we have the manage in place support for Google Drive. 
I do have a few screenshots that I can talk to it and we shall see that soon. And the third one is around auto classification. This was a limitation in the idol enterprise. Now we worked on that and have remo removed that limitation in uh, idol enterprise. On the mobile app, uh, like I mentioned, we have redesigned the uh, app interface. Now it adheres to the open text UX standards and uh, it's a better user experience. And there is also a backend framework change which makes it uh, a little better than the older app. All right, so I'll not talk to the screenshots. I do have uh, a feature demo. Uh, it's a recording, so I'll run the recording. Give me a minute to switch uh, the screen. Welcome to the Content Manager 24.2 feature demo. Today we will cover a couple of new features in the web client. As part of our modernization strategy, we have been revamping the user experience around the most often used capabilities in web client. As more and more customers are adopting the web-based experience, we get several requests to enhance existing experience as well as add new capabilities that delivers on productivity. In 24.2 release, we worked with our in-house UX team to revamp the records creation experience and also introduced a new function to improve the productivity of users working with bulk records. Let's talk about the first topic, creation of records. Now, most of you would be familiar with the record creation workflows in web client. Currently users can upload a single file, multiple files or drag and drop them into the browser window. In last release, we added support for dropping the documents on specific folders classifications. And in 24.2, we get a new UI and a better experience to create records. Now, this new experience is simpler to understand and the users get the capabilities to manipulate the record creations a lot better. Here's the new page. The left pane has a upload button and will show the list of documents that are queued up for upload. And the central pane shows the configuration options. It will continue to support the drag and drop philosophy using which you can drop single or multiple files. Let's do a mix of both methods. Let's drop a few files and then upload a few more. So here are a few files that I can drop into this window. And then I'll upload a few more. So here's the complete list of the files that I would want to create some records. Now note that the moment I select a record type, the left pane is disabled. Now before I proceed with the additional information here, let's talk about the suppress for subsequent files button here. When I select this button, the same data would be copied across all of the documents. Let's create the first one without the suppression. So let's quickly select an author and a container. As you can see, the first document has a record associated and there is a green tick. Now we will select the suppress for subsequent files and provide the mandatory information.
as you can see, proceeds to create records for all of the documents. Clicking on finish button takes us back to the landing page, which lists all the records that are created. OK, so now it's apparent that I do not have a default record type associated with the records creation workflow. It's easy to associate a default record type, and this can be done in the document tab found in the options button in desktop client. Now for the sake of demo, I have already done that and have restarted my web server. Let's now take a look at the record creation workflow again. So I'll drop the three files selected here and note that in this case, the left pane is grayed out. It will always be in a grayed out mode since the record type is automatically selected. Let's fill in the fields and create the records. The records are successfully created and as usual, the landing page shows the newly created records list. Now a point to note is that the check-in cell method of record creation remains unchanged and will continue to work as is independent of this new records creation workflow. That will be revamped in a future release. I hope this feature presentation was useful to you. Now let's talk about the next feature. It's an enhancement that we call custom column view. Let's do a quick recap from the previous releases. Previous releases uh, introduce the grid view, uh, which is a derivative of the search windows from the desktop client and the ability to rearrange the columns. Uh, there is also persistence in the column view, which means the arrangement of the columns is not lost in case of accidental reloads. The challenges that end user now have uh, are often alternating tasks between one record type and another. For example, working with contracts, I want to see contact metadata in my columns, but then working with tax records, I want to see a completely different metadata displayed. Each time I go between contracts and tax records, I have to pick the column sorter and keep changing the columns one by one. That takes too long. I would prefer saving the views and name it accordingly, such as a contract view or a tax view, being able to swap between them in one click. And in this release, the user can save this arrangement and collection of columns with a name and a drop down button that lets the end user view and easily swaps the saved views that are on display. These views are per user. So this is the new window in which you can add views. Uh, you can select the particular columns that can be saved per view. So in this case, let's uh, add a new view called checked out. And uh, we'll just add the checked out column and we can save the view. So right now the view for checked out is selected and as you can see the column for checked out is also visible here. Let's add another view. Let's call it author view. And in this view, we will select the author column and deselect the checkout column. Let's save this view. 
and as you can see, we now have the author columns. So from this button, you can easily switch between two views. So in this case, it is author and the checked out view. Let's look at some of the other options available in this tool. So you can, of course, rename the views. You can duplicate the views for you know, quick addition or deletion of particular columns, or you can set this view as a default for desktop client. So the CM desktop client view is the one which is replicated and uh, seen in the desktop client. So let's try to rename this. There we see it's renamed. We can also mark this view as the favorite view. And as you can see, the favorite view has a top listing, whereas the remaining view are listed under other other views. I hope this feature presentation was useful to you. Thank you for attending. All right, so I'll switch back to the main presentation. Allow me a minute. I hope uh, you are able to see the slide deck. All right, <clears throat> so continuing our presentation, uh, some of the additional features that's part of 24.2. So this is a screenshot of the MS Team shared channels. Uh, in a line, the shared channels allow the organizations to create a group which consists of internal employees as well as external stakeholders. So the Teams integration app did not have this support uh, till 24.2. And uh, here you are, uh, it is supported. And all of the Teams integration capabilities also extend to the shared channels also. The next uh, that we have is the manage in place for Google Drive. Uh, these are three different screenshots, basically uh, showing you the configuration of the manage in place uh, doc store for Google Drive. Um, and once this is configured, uh, it will start pulling the files from this particular Google Drive and all of the functionalities for the manage in place doc store also applies to the Google Drive. I would encourage you if you have not uh, seen the manage in place white paper, I would encourage all of you to read that. I have that uh, as a screenshot in one of my later slides. All right, so this one is on the automatic license renewal. Uh, this came as a strong feedback from a lot of our CM select customers um, who despite having a future license having done their homework in purchasing uh, way before time we were unable to apply that license so they had to look at the warnings and wait till the date of expiry for the renewal to happen now with this change we have enabled the license tool to pick up a future dated license and uh, if it is a valid license it works seamlessly and auto renews the uh, license file on the day of expiry so once uploaded, the user need not uh, have to do anything else. I was talking about the mobile app redesign earlier and uh, a few screenshots here. So if you have used the older mobile app, you would see a better 
usage of the mobile screen with the items, uh, better use of space with the uh, with the functions mentioned here, and the the categorization, the arrangement, everything has been upgraded to adhere to the open text UX standards. It also adheres to a modern standard, a material design, and uh, people using this app would not would find this pretty useful would find this pretty easy to use without a lot of uh, additional training all right so this is the key slide this is the uh, roadmap slide that uh, talks about what we plan for content manager in the near future as you can see we have the top innovations uh, which is basically all the values that we provide in 24.2 release. So the con content manager auto classification is a better together story. It now works uh, without any limitations with idle enterprise. Uh, the modernization story is all about the mobile app UX exchange. It's about the web client UX exchange and the new feature that improves the productivity. Uh, the collaboration story is around the managing place support for uh, the Google ecosystem and uh, this basically widens our uh, enterprise data management scope. So the next one, uh, the first bucket here is 24.3. Uh, that's in Q3 2024. So <clears throat> the first topic is around uh, the first theme. The first bucket is around collaboration in which we plan to make parity with the Office Online primary integration. So as most of you would know that uh, Microsoft has deprecated the COM add-ins, the support for Visual Studio add-ins, and we do have a zero footprint client today that works with the Outlook Online uh, Microsoft 365 productivity suite. Uh, there is uh, feature parity uh, differences that we plan to address in this release. So that's part of the 24.3. The other stuff are around Google Drive. And uh, like I said, the first step to Google ecosystem was the manage in place. We plan to bring in a checkout capability, which is very similar to what we have with the OneDrive today. So uh, folks who have used the uh, OneDrive checkout capability, be it web client or desktop client, know how it works. And this feature is going to be very similar to uh, the OneDrive checkout. So check out to Google Drive is the second step towards the Google ecosystem. And like I said, we will have incremental innovation with in every bucket, every release. So MS Team calendar events is uh, the one support that we do not have today and we plan to bring that in 24.3. Around web UI, we continue to standardize the check-in checkout experience. We are working with the UX team to bring in a better search experience. Uh, now this search experience is inspired by some of our modern tools like SharePoint, uh, even the e-retailers like Amazon, whereby we are able to use filters to refine a search. So that's something which we will see in the 24.3 release. And uh, the next one is around reporting. Uh, we consider reporting as one of the key elements that our customers are looking at and in this release we are looking to use the word templates uh, to be part of the reporting framework which basically can auto populate with the uh, record metadata and send it to stakeholders so the last line around security improvements uh, i should be repeating this line across all the buckets because that's something which we are doing for every release uh, we have a extensive security testing framework and we test it for every release not just for the major release the next one is <coughs> excuse me the next one is uh, 24.4 now the dot four releases for content manager is the long-term support release and uh, in 24.4 we have uh, several themes uh, the first one being on the mobile application uh, so our user persona for the mobile application was a remote uh, worker, uh, a warehouse worker or a remote user. And uh, the barcode scanning is something which we had planned for the mobile application and will be 
uh, delivering that in the 24.4 release. In addition to this, there will be functions towards uh, viewing the physical management request or being able to relate records in the mobile app. Uh, from a collaboration perspective, we'll continue with the uh, innovations around MS Team integrations. So this will be looking at supporting the creation of check-in styles uh, uh, in this release. And in the modernization bucket, uh, we, we plan to look at the consignment toolkit performance improvements. We plan to look at the custom column views that we just saw a feature demo right now. We plan to the plan to bring in the capability to share the views within the organization. And again, uh, with the web client support for check-in styles. On the automation uh, and the reporting side of things, we plan to invest time around improving the auto classification. So we plan to invest time in building accuracy and uh, improving the documentation around this. And in the reporting side of things, we plan to look at the reporting dashboards, which should be able to uh, give you a single window, a single pane of information for all of your uh, reporting needs. Should be configurable and it should be uh, easily shareable across the organization. Moving on uh, to the next release, it goes into the next year, 2025. So Q1 2025 version 25.1. We continue with our collaboration team uh, again towards the MS team uh, configuration that should be that is geared towards easy deployment uh, within the multiple teams in an organization. From a modernization perspective, we plan to bring in changes to the workflow capabilities in web client, which is limited today. So we plan to expand that. We plan to bring in support for redaction, annotation in the web client. Like I said earlier, I mentioned earlier that our plan, our strategy is to increase the web client footprint uh, for all of our customers. So this goes towards that. And we plan to uh, bring in compliance around the accessibilities we are hearing. Uh, feedback from our customers around some of the accessibility uh, journeys, which is non-negotiable. So we plan to address that in this release. The last one is around the search capabilities. Uh, one of our themes was, one of our directional themes was uh, to improve the search capabilities. So uh, in this release, we plan to bring in a feature which allows you to search all the metadata fields at once. Yeah. The next bucket is 25.2 and uh, in this it is again four different buckets, four different themes. Modernization is geared towards enabling the web client to be able to do workflow design. Uh, the workflow template design, if some of you uh, have been using it, uh, would know that, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> So if you have been using the workflow workflow template designer, you would know that the UX, the user experience, the UI is old and uh, it has flexibility, but uh, not so much. So what we plan to do here is we plan to create a workflow template designer right in the web client, which will make life easier for people uh, not having to look towards the desktop client. On the mobile app side of things, uh, I mentioned that our user persona was a remote worker. So document review approval uh, right from your uh, mobile device when you're on the move, uh, that's a uh, capability that we want to deliver on the mobile app. So that's placed in the 25.2. Again, from the collaboration perspective, we uh, plan to continue our uh, integration with the Google ecosystem. So last we had, uh, so this release has managed in place. One of the release will have checkout experience to Google Drive, and this release will look at integrating the content manager uh, with the Google Office productivity suite. And then we have a in-house uh, e-signature app called Open Text Core Signature. We plan to uh, support that also. And last but not the least, the automation bucket has the 
auto classification improvements and we plan to look at the category training improvements uh, by which we expect human in, human intervention to lessen down to uh, come down so that the accuracy of the category the accuracy of the auto classification would improve would be better without much human in, uh, intervention so again this roadmap is uh, just the top set of features there are a lot many features which uh, you guys would have already seen that we do have a lot many features so with every release i encourage you to look at the documentation uh, we do have extensive documentation and in our new page uh, we do have a help file uh, which is something very useful to people who do not want to install uh, a new version of cm they can simply look at the help files without installation all right i'll skip this we have this okay so <clears throat> we'll talk a bit about <coughs> content manager cloud now <coughs> excuse me <coughs> so uh, all of us here are or should be uh, aware of the content manager cloud offering that we have we have had this for a few years now uh, we do have some updates towards this we have additional security achievements from the UK government, National Cyber Security Center, uh, the cloud security principles assessment is now complete, and uh, we do have the report that's available on request. And CM also star level one uh, certified from the Cloud Security Alliance. And from a performance optimization perspective, we do have 70% reduction in time to perform document content indexing. And uh, we have uh, optimized the DB performance in CM Cloud. Uh, from a growth perspective, we have over 70,000 users globally uh, who are on cloud and they realize the benefit of this model. Uh, and some of the benefits are upgrades and patching is included, 24 bar 7 security and operational monitoring and response. While talking to uh, our customers, we have come across several queries, some of them very similar, very common to each other across all geographies. Um, some of the myths or some of the concerns that we have heard is we are integrated with too many third party apps, customizations and systems to move to cloud. We must be on a recent version before moving to cloud. We can migrate to cloud because we have sensitive data or we can migrate to cloud because our system is mission critical. So, you know, we address uh, all of our customers with these concerns. Uh, so for the first concern <coughs> uh, around too many third party apps, CM Cloud does support all integration model, which includes, uh, you know, the COM SDK, .NET SDK and web service API. If you think that you need to be in a recent version, there isn't a minimum version requirement to upgrade. Transitioning to CM Cloud will usually include an upgrade to the latest release of Content Manager, and uh, the CM Cloud does include regular patching and upgrades to ensure that you are always on a supported version. Now, to the concerns that we have sensitive data, uh, talk to us. We can tell you that how CM Cloud is the most secure SaaS Content Manager Cloud platform in the world. And for uh, many customers that have already moved to cloud, it actually represents a significant security uplift. And CM Cloud, you know, as an example, hosts highly classified protected data sets. For customers who concern, whose concerns are around, you know, CM systems is missing criti critical, uh, we tell them that uh, it is SLA backed and guaranteed with 99.99% of time and 15 minute recovery time objective and one minute recovery point objective. And the CM Cloud comes with high availability topology with multi geography disaster recovery model. So talk to us if you have uh, these concerns or anything else, and we'll be happy to uh, talk towards those, address those.
Okay, this slide is what's on data. This is basically a bulk slide of uh, all the requests, all the ideas that we pick up from our discussions with customers, partners. We pick it up from ideas portal uh, and sometimes from industry papers. So again, I'll not go through each of these. Uh, these are categorized with, uh, you know, lowering the or addressing the total cost of ownership, uh, addressing performance, analytics, reporting, uh, BPA, business process automation, and user experience. So I'll talk to this, but there are good ways in which you can contribute to the radar or you can talk to us and uh, we can prioritize some of the uh, feature that you see here uh, into the roadmap. Now, I don't know if you would remember this a uh, couple of roadmap presentations earlier. We did have the uh, Google ecosystem in what's on data, but today that has moved into the roadmap because we realized the priority and uh, we got the directions from customers and partners alike. So similarly, if there are features that you would want us to prioritize, please reach out to us. All right, so <clears throat> let's take a quick look at the resources. Um, I think I mentioned earlier that uh, we do have a new documentation portal and uh, I would encourage all of you guys to look at this portal. It's simple, decluttered, and you will find a lot more information than just the documentation files here. You would find the help files. You would find uh, uh, white papers uh, on this page. And uh, we have been adding uh, some white, we had some white papers and we have been adding some more. So on the white papers, we had a white paper on the manage in place functionality. And recently we updated another white paper on the SQL text indexing change. Now this SQL text indexing change has happened a couple of releases earlier, but uh, it has been a source of uh, confusion to a lot of our customers. Uh, we basically fixed a few issues, but we figured out that the large bucket of uh, concerns was around the missing use cases or the uh, documentation around it. So. We felt that documentation is not the correct place, but a white paper can surely address some of those concerns. So we do have a white paper out now. So similarly, if there are other areas that we see that uh, a white paper can help, we work on it and we will publish it here. Then we have our YouTube channel, uh, which basically where we post all of our announcement videos, uh, you know, quick feature videos uh, associated with uh, new release. And uh, the, the screenshot that you see here is a bit old. I think I need to refresh that, but I do promise that we have a CM 23.4 overview and we'll be uploading the 24.2 release videos in this channel soon. So uh, bookmark this channel. Uh, feel free to visit this channel to keep, uh, you know, up to date with the latest releases announcements. A few uh, customers have asked us, uh, how do I figure out the lifecycle policy for uh, the versions that I have? We encourage them to look at the product lifecycle page, uh, which keeps updating with the newer versions that is released. And uh, I would like to recap here that the dot one, two, and three versions for content manager is innovation release that has a different life cycle. And the dot four is a long-term support release, which has a increased life cycle. So it comes with three years of current maintenance plus two years of sustaining maintenance. Okay, so this page is quite important to uh, each of you if you want to communicate with us, talk to us directly. Um, this is a product uh, feedback page. This is this is what we call ideas exchange portal. So this is a page which is driven by community. It uh, it has voting systems. So if you know community folks like an idea, they can vote on it. And uh, we do have certain criteria of prioritization in which we look at some of the ideas voted better, and uh, we kind of 
pick it up uh, for discussions with priority. So raise an idea. Uh, this is not the only method. You can reach out to us. You can reach out to your uh, open text contact for uh, talking to us to set up a meeting with us, and we would love to hear your feedback. Uh, we had this particular announcements uh, session in the morning, and uh, one of the questions, or you know, one of the common questions that we uh, kept getting is, please share the links with us. So what we have done is we have created a, a community tip uh, post. Uh, which covers or which mentions all the links that you see here, YouTube channel, documentation portal, feedback portal, lifecycle page, case studies and more. So <clears throat> if you have a mobile phone, uh, feel free to scan this or take a picture. This uh, QR code is a link to this particular community portal page uh, to that particular topic and uh, you would be able to uh, bookmark all of those links. Hi, Punya. Um, this is Gwendolyn. I've also added the link in the Q&A. So like Punya says, um, just by using that one link to get to the community page, which is really the center of everything you do, um, we'll have a post with links for all of the other things that you see here. Thanks. Thanks, Gwen. All right, so that bring, brings us to the end of the session. Let me check if there are Q&A chats that can be responded. Would you like me to go through and read you some questions, Pinya? Yeah, sure. Um, so the first one, will 24.2 allow drag and drop filing from the new Outlook? Uh, no, that's not a feature that we have in 24.2. When it comes to bulk import, will there be an update or change for how CM captures bulk import metadata? So with the bulk import change that we plan today, uh, uh, we, we do have the data port that uh, works for the bulk import, uh, but the tool, the purpose of the tool uh, was very different from what it delivers today. So our idea is to build a simpler tool uh, to be able to do similar functionality, to be able to do to be able to achieve similar functionality uh, right from the web client. So in that process of building a new newer process for bulk import, we have to optimize certain ways on how it works. So we will definitely keep the performance aspect in mind while building it. Uh, so I hope that the new process for doing the bulk import should improve the experience. Thanks, Punya. And certainly um, there's a lot of things related to bulk import on our roadmap that you hopefully saw today as well, if that's a topic that you're interested in. In 24.2, is the web UI compatible with Mac OS and browsers? So Chrome, Firefox, Edge with check-in, check-out. So we do test uh, the web browser uh, with Chrome, uh, Firefox, uh, Microsoft Edge. Um, I think there is another browser which, uh, which I'm not able to recollect right now, but there are four browsers that we check uh, for the check-in check-out processes. Yep, so it's a, it's a yes, and I know that was something that we recently added to the product. So yeah, it'll be valid for 24. Dot two as well. Um, we have a question. I'm sure you uh, must have stated this, Punya, but I think it bears repeating. Um, when is 24.2 the release as well as the release notes available? So we, we are targeting uh, the end of this month. Um, the release notes will be available on the same day of GA. Uh, the plan is to get it Trying to calculate the date here is 23. The plan is to get it out by uh, Friday of this week, so it should be the release notes should also be available by Friday. 
Okay, we had a lot of comments in general about how do I get to recording of the session. So in the same way that we shared you that link to the community page, um, telling you that that was where you could find links to everything else and that it's really the central source for information on CM. Similarly, when this recording is available, um, we will share the link to it on the community as well. So keep an eye out for it there. Uh, we usually host it on Brightcove and uh, it'll be a link to the recording. Um, we've had the same question that we have pretty much every time we do a session, Pinya, but it bears repeating. Um, people can see that a lot of our updates are on the web client and they're asking, uh, will the full client or the thick client ever be retired? Um, so just a reminder that we don't plan to retire the full client, but it's just that going forward, our strategy is to provide you with a modern web product and hence a lot of our innovations are in that area, um, but we're not going to take Take away your beloved uh, desktop client, so no need to panic on that. Um, some questions about our plans on reporting, which I think uh, was covered in, in the roadmap, um, that we do have plans for a better UI for some of those reports, so look out for that coming up. Um, and I think that's it, Punya. Thanks, Ben. Right on time uh, as well. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, just think of time. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, so just as a uh, reminder so on community, you can ask questions, you can interact with product management as well as um, other customers, including, as Punya said, the ideas portal where you can vote for the enhancement features that other people are raising. Um, so really do encourage you to have a look at that if you didn't know about community until today. All right, thank you Thanks, everybody for joining. Good. Punya, any closing remarks? I think that's uh, pretty much summed up on the community side of things. Uh, feel free to uh, reach out to us on the product ideas page or on the community portal or you know, contact your uh, sales to reach out to us. Uh, with that being said, uh, I would like to thank all of you for taking time to join this session. And thank you, Gwen, for uh, listing the Q&A. Uh, question and answers. Thank you everybody, have a great day.